Hello everybody, this is Budrich and this video I'm going to try to do something quite complicated here and also it's like it's very very hacky uh, dirt hacky dirty and hacky is what this is but because what we're going to do is is I'm going to show you how this works exactly uh, I can change uh, themes here with my Mondo Mondo script, you know. So now I change here color theme to, to pine, and I can also change to to um, yeah, let's change back to i3 there. I'm gonna get these colors, and as you can see, it changes all colors: uh, the terminal colors, sublime colors, polybar colors, and the GTK colors. And all of these are are like weird in a way, but. Uh, Today I, I wanted to show you how, how I changed the, the GTK colors here. And the thing is, uh, you don't need to, to use Mondo here. Uh, I hope you will, you will get some understanding and maybe some ideas about this. And it's also kind of a reply here because uh, Gavin uh, asked me a couple of days ago how that works, uh, how I can change themes so quickly, the GTK themes. Um, I answered him, and I think also my, my uh, answer here helped him, so, so it, uh, it actually worked for him, but uh, I thought maybe it, uh, this, this could be a good video uh, in a way. And the thing is, I don't really recommend this in, in any ways, because you will see some of the weird stuff that, that it uh, requires, uh, and s everything doesn't work perfect here. And there are even... Yeah, whatever. Let's take it from the start. Uh, I have a clone here of a theme, a GTK theme. And GTK, you know, that is... Uh, here we have a GTK application. Here we have a GTK application. I also use this GTK application. The Pavu control. Clavaru is a, a touch typing training program. And Thunar is my file manager and it's not much more GTK applications that I use uh, of course also uh, 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 Pale Moon here uses uh, GTK uh, and uh, even Sublime uses GTK for its menu uh, but here we can see it have the wrong colors here and that is because, uh, uh, as you probably know, there are two versions of GTK. Thunar, Thunar that I use is GTK2. Uh, Pale Moon also uses GTK2. This power control here is GTK3. Clavaro GTK3 and Sublime GTK3. And I haven't found a way to update GTK3 th themes instantly. I need to restart those programs for, for the changes to take effect. But uh, GTK2 themes, uh, then you can update the themes uh, uh, on, on the fly, so to speak. So maybe we can see it again here if I do Mongo apply pine. You can see it updated. This sublime, these things are not GTK, they are built in sublime theme rendering engine. It's just this menu that is the GTK part. And not even, uh, you know, these parts are not GTK and, and uh, this is not GTK either. In sublime, it's only the menu bar here. Uh, but you can see this GTK3 part didn't update as well. Another weird thing is that uh, if, I, if I have icon view in. Uh, uh, in Thunar like this and change the theme again here. Now you can see it updated the menu but it doesn't update the icon view part of the window. I, I, I don't know if this is because uh, this icon view is actually GTK3. I, I, I'm not sure, I don't know. And as you can see, it's even if it looks just smooth and I can change everything really quickly, it doesn't work 100%. And this is one of the big drawbacks, you know, when, when you're having a, a, a not using a, a desktop environment at all, then you kind of have to dirt tackle all of these things yourself. And I have kind of given up. I haven't spent any time trying to 
there is probably a way to update the GTK themes, but I, I just can't figure out how to do it. I think you can go into D-Bus and do things there, but D-Bus gives me a headache. Just saying the word is annoying. Uh, and I customize these themes by modifying this Numix Solarized GTK theme uh, by Ferdi265 here. I have created my own fork of this, um, but it's actually on par here with with Ferdi's version. And Ferdi's version is a fork of the original Numix GTK theme that isn't Solarized. Uh, and the big difference here, except uh, the Solarized version have the Solarized colors, is also that this Solarized version here uh, comes with these color templating files here. I just discovered this by chance. And you can just modify these color template files here. And as you can see, there are just 77 lines here. Most of them are calling the same value again. So, so it's... Uh, a matter of changing 16 different uh, variables here uh, and then then you can uh, because there's a make file in this repository as well when you have created your own theme file like this then you just use that theme file to make the theme and then it will create a new GTK theme based on those colors but it will keep all the new mix style of the buttons and everything now I have found that this theme is, is the one that, that I'm most um, happy with in a way, you know. Uh, this is actually take two of this video because <laughs> I made, made a version where I, uh, ju just to, to display that there is a, a different uh, way you can do this by using a, a program that's called Umox. You've probably seen this. And in the last uh, version of this video that I just removed, I actually installed Umox here. But it was like 50 megabyte download and it took almost 30 minutes to compile this program. Uh, uh, sure, I was recording while doing it, but it was like, and it was pulling crazy uh, numbers of, of um, dependencies that also needed to be compiled and stuff. It, it took forever. and. Uh, yeah, I'm sad to say it, but, but uh, kind of a bloated program. And um, maybe one of the most annoying things is that the, I don't really like the themes that you, that you, uh, that Umox create here. We could just take one of these pre-built themes here, C64, or maybe that's a stupid example, but maybe retro is not. Gnome colors, shiki dust. Whatever, let's just take this, export it. And that will create a, 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 a new GTK theme for us uh, when you export here. And it's actually quite fast to export the themes and stuff. Uh, it's much faster than the, the method I will show you. And, and, and my method is also bloated, by the way, just so you know. Because remember, this is dirty dirt tax here. Now I just want to show you how this works. Uh, I really don't recommend this. What, what I recommend uh, when it comes to GTK themes is actually, I hate to say it, but but uh, uh, use one of, one of the known and maintained and uh, good themes. Maybe even the default Adwaita theme or something. Because there are not many custom themes that are uh, uh, that are good. Um, it's actually very difficult uh, to create a good theme it seems and I have never really done it the proper way you know writing my own theme from scratch uh, creating the images and the CSS and stuff because it's so much work to do it and it takes so much time so by the time you are done uh, GNOME or GTK will release a new version of GTK and your theme will be obsolete in a way you know it's like it's not worth worth it in, in one way, but it, you know, I like to do these things. I, I just want to know how, how it works, and I kind of like in one way. I also like this when it have the same colors, 
But also, is that so important that everything have the same unified color? I'm starting to ask myself if, if what I'm actually doing, you know, sometimes. Whatever. Okay, close this. But, but this program is one program you can easily do this from a GUI and set your own colors and you can preview them here as they are. And, and now I generated this uh, shiki dust here. Uh, no, don't say that. And then I think I can apply that by using LX appearance, which is another classic one. And there we have cheeky dust that I just generated there. Maybe this one looks better, but I have found that many of these uh, uh, Umox themes doesn't look that good. Uh, uh, some some things feels a bit broken, even you know. Some button text. Well, this one actually seems to, to, to look fine. But even some of the default Umox themes, it's, you, you get like some buttons and the text is unreadable. It have almost the same color as the background and stuff. It's, it's a bit weird. And maybe it's just me who haven't taken the time uh, learning the Umox themes uh, syntax and stuff correctly. But that's one alternative to create your own uh, GTK themes. But I have found this one to be the best. Yeah, and here you can see now this doesn't look that good, you know. The the <laughs> I don't know. It's like I never get a, a, a perfect theme with Umox. And also now that I know that it was such a crazy thing to install. Um, I don't really recommend that. Oops. Ah, sudo. Okay. Here you can see. Yeah, total removed size 273 megabytes. It's like crazy stuff here. Yeah, Umox is 260 megabytes itself. And it took about 30 minutes to compile it, so. I don't know. A little bit too much work, but at the same time, what I'm going to show you here, it, it also needs some crazy dependencies here. Um, let's do it from scratch here. Let's clone this repo. Let's clone the my version. Because I think I need to add, I haven't pushed that uh, the changes I did to it. I found an, a, a bug in it. And this is the thing, I, I don't even know it. it it feels kind of pointless to, to kind of create customizations of a fork that is a fork of a fork of a fork. And then I don't think many people use this or care about my small improvements here, whatever. But maybe I will add the changes I will show you here because they are very, very, very difficult to find this. Okay, clone this. Uh, let's go to git. Clones. And then we we'll clone this, git clone. Let's save it as uh, solarized GTK. Super secret password. Right. Um, so now we got this this thing here. Let's create a new project here also. Git CLN CLN GT new me so la there it is. Project name so right GTK. Okay, so this is the directory here I just cloned, and here we can see all of these color things here. And all you need to do is, is uh, either modify one of the existing ones or create your own. So you could, I recommend taking this standard color, colors here, copy it, uh, and then create your own file. You can call it custom, and it's important here, custom.colors, that you have the same file extension. Save that. And then let's do this the stupid way here first now. So BG color, background color. Let's make it uh, super red background color, whatever. Foreground color can be this, whatever. You, you, you see how this works. You, you just change these colors. 
Then you have info color. You have, and this is something. This this is a bit trial and error to find what what where these colors actually appear later in the in the theme. Um, and I'm not sure. It, it looks like you can create. Uh, you can use functions and stuff here. I, I have no idea what kind of language these colors files are written in and stuff. So I. I don't really know what you got, but 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 you can see you can use at least darken and shade functions here, which is, I guess, it might actually be SAS functions that you can that you write, but I'm not sure. Whatever you just config you you modify this to your liking, um, and then here also this is kind of important as well that you change the name here uh, to to the same name as the file here or or the name of your theme let's call it costume for now maybe that was also not the best name but i don't think i have a theme that's called costume and then you can just uh, uh, execute make with this make file here and change theme here to the same name as your color color file there costume uh, but before you can do that, you need you need uh, to install some dependencies here. That and those dependencies are a bit weird, and it's not very clear here exactly what you need to do. This stuff here, ignore. First, you need to compile the theme using the ses command. It, it's also the, it's not really accurate the, the instructions here. But you need uh, the SAS compiler, and that's available on ARC as the package uh, pacman ss SAS. I think it's called SAS Ruby or Ruby SAS or something. Here it is Ruby SAS. Uh, you need to install this for this to work here. And I don't like Ruby SAS that much, but it's kind of a good program to have if you're going to work with SAS, but it will also pull Ruby if you don't have it, but whatever. It's one, one dependency you need here. You also need these two dependencies here. If you're using ARC, uh, and you can see it's different ones for uh, GTK and, and uh, or Ubuntu, Fedora, whatever. But I use ARC, so I need these, and I need uh, Ruby SAS, and then you also need, it's not mentioned anywhere, but you also need to install Inkscape, and Inkscape is kind of a gigantic program, it's a, it's a vector image uh, program, very similar to, to Adobe uh, Illustrator, so, so that's kind of a heavy, heavy pro program, and kind of an insane dependency for this, but, but you need that anyways. Um, so, what, on, on ARC, you will do this pacman install glib2 gdk pix buff2 uh, ruby dash sass and inkscape. I already have all the uh, dependencies, but I thought why not write it here so you can see. So, this is what you have to do on on arc uh, and the others just replace uh, ruby just add ruby sass and inkscape to the to the other dependency lists here and there you can see it's it's kind of a kind of a big thing to install and, and most of this is inkscape it's it, but inkscape it, i like in, inkscape it's a good program I, I really like it so i have no problem installing that and, and it's a program i actually use sometimes uh, with or without this, but I, I completely understand if you don't want to do this because you don't want these stupid uh, dependencies. But let's just reinstall it here for 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 science. Uh, and now when that is done, then we can actually uh, use this make file here. Um, but we need to change one thing, and that is the variable theme here. Uh, and and you need to. Here, as theme, you, you use the same name as your colors file here, which is costume.colors. Uh, so, uh, one way is to just change this to costume here. But a better way to do it is to do... Uh, and you also need to run this uh, make here as sudo, because it, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it uses some... 
Python libraries or whatever it is for, that, that are located in U, USR or something like that. I, I never gotten this working uh, without sudo, which is also a bit annoying to be honest. Uh, but, but you can probably get that working if you really know how to do it, of course. If you know how to do it, of course you can do it. But whatever. If, if you want to change this theme variable in the make file, then you can do this instead of changing it in the actual file. You just write the name of the variable and then equal custom. And then it will set the, or make theme. And then it will uh, use custom here uh, as the value for the theme variable in, in the rest of the make file when we execute the command. And then install. Now you'll see th this will take quite some time here. I think this rendering process here, this is what it uses Inkscape for. We can also see this here or something, I don't, I don't even remember. Assets. Yeah, here are these PNG files that it generates here now. And it generates both uh, like double scaled uh, versions. So it, the theme will work on, on high DPI monitors as well. And it generates all these PNG images from, from uh, um, this SVG file here that contains all, all those uh, images. And I think that is, that is um, what it needs Inkscape for. And just as you can see here, it, it actually takes quite some time to do that. And after it has done that, it also processes uh, a bunch of uh, SAS files to generate the CSS uh, uh, files for the theme. So, so it takes some time. It's much slower than, than uh, Umox, but that is because it renders these extra images for us. And I'm sure this can be sped up quite a bit by, by really, really looking into how, how all of this works, but ain't got time for that, and especially not now. And then we can see here it have uh, installed theme to this location, USR uh, slash share slash themes slash costume. And uh, when, when a theme is located there, then, then you can uh, select it from, for example, LX Appearance. So we should have our costume theme there. And look, it's beautiful. Apply, close. So that's how I generate the themes. Uh, what you need, the, the pre, yeah, what you need to, to, to get started here at all. Okay, uh, 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 maybe we should do this. Let's go to my dot folder here. Uh, mondo, Mondo, I got my Mondo setting somewhere. Yeah, let, let, let's back this Mondo stuff up completely here. There. Then we open our custom colors here and create a new Mondo template from this uh, 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 file. So Mondo, uh, is it T, I think, for template. Um, I don't, I don't remember how to use my own program. It was so long ago since I did this. So let's open the help screen here and see if we can. Template T file. Aren't you supposed to be able to? Yeah, here we have template file or name file. Okay. So Mondo template name. Uh, and the name here, let's call it GTK theme and the file is custom colors excuse this and mondo of course that's my own program you can find that on bud labs it's, it's used to create templates and stuff it's a bit faster than than the gtk generator here so 25 milliseconds we can now see it created uh, this mondo directory with the generators directory and the gtk theme directory with our template files here. So let's add that to our uh, um, project here. There. Uh, and right now, 
this contains a couple of files. Uh, none of them looks uh, particularly interesting except for this one because this is a uh, this is just a copy right now of, of the of the uh, 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 file that we used here, custom colors, which will copy this to our Mondo directory here, and then we can can use this to, to easily create a template uh, for to create new themes. Uh, but we need one more thing here, uh, and that is uh, uh, um, a theme, of course. So we do Mondo theme, maybe, or is it new? Update, generate, ah, new, 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 new. Okay, new, and then we can um, name our theme here, my colors, whatever. And there you can see we've got some more stuff here. We got our themes directory containing a file called my colors, which is just a basic theme here that with, with some default colors. Uh, and if we want uh, to inject these colors, so to speak, into our uh, GTK theme template here, uh, this is just a, a really quick crash course here. So, so let's use this cyan color. Uh, it's called cyan. It's, it's the name of the variable here. And the value of the variable is the second column. That, that is how the themes works like. It, it, it's an extremely simple syntax here. So let's just take one of these values. We don't need to make a, a serious theme really. And change the background color here. Instead of red, we want to use uh, cyan. And then you write it like pr uh, percentage, percentage, the name of the variable, percentage, percentage in our Mondo template here. Then we we'll save. Uh, then we can look at Mondo settings here. Um, yeah, in a way we could do this. So this means that every time I apply, it will be copied to this to this location. I think. Mondo apply apply my colors. Yeah, let's see what happens here. I think it will both generate and apply now. Yes, now we can see some things happened here. It created this my colors uh, file here uh, in this directory here. And this actually contains now, now we have the cyan color here replaced uh, at the same place as we put cyan in uh, double percentage signs there. Um, but it also did, because apply, uh, what that really does is it takes this my colors file here, which is that this file has the same name as the theme, my colors. Um, and then it copies that file to this location, uh, which is uh, by default the source uh, file used to create the template, which is um, let's see if we can find it, or we have it here actually. So now if we look at custom here also, it should also have the cyan colors. Mm. But that is not exactly how, how I would like this uh, apply and generate to work here uh, when we are doing, because this is probably the most advanced uh, uh, Mondo generator you can create this GTK thing here. Um, because what we really want to do is, when we generate the theme, uh, right now I didn't really show you, let, let's do another theme, so we have two themes to, to test with, it's easier to see what's going on. New, other colors, and there we have other colors, and here we can set uh, uh, cyan to some other color, for example, um, whatever, let, let's just take some random. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, 
So we have one theme, my colors, cyan looks, looks like this, and then we have other colors, cyan looks like this. And if we do mondo generate other colors, there. What happens when you do generate is it will only generate the colors. Now we didn't copy these other colors to, uh, to here. It will still have the cyan, cyan uh, uh, colors here. But when you do apply, then by default, it will copy uh, uh, the theme file with the same name as the uh, theme you want to apply. It will copy those, that file to the target location here. But that is not really what we want to do when we apply. And when we generate, we also want to actually generate the, the GTK theme itself. So, um, to generate, we already have the, the command for that, you know, it's sudo make theme, the name of the theme, uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and to do that, we can go into the generate uh, file here and we can see this script is executed every time a theme is generated. Each, each generate can have its own mondo generate script. The default syntax is blah blah blah. Dollar $1 is equal to mondo deal generator type theme dot extensions. So, so here dollar $1 will actually be equal to uh, uh, yeah these guys you know uh, and that means because what we really are interested in here is the name of the theme and that will be dollar one uh, trim, trimming dollar one everything up until the last slash and then we will just have the theme na theme name here in this script so we can create a variable theme name is equal to dollar one remove everything up until the last slash uh, and then we can do a gtk theme deal which is equal to the directory where, where uh, the, the gtk theme repository is cloned to so it should be this right we can just paste that long version in here it's okay and then i like to do this uh, open a subshell here And then we cd into gtk theme deal if that fails exit one gtk theme deal and in that directory we we do a sudo make theme is equal to theme but here this is also weird now because it doesn't really what are we doing now? Generate. Yeah, that's what we want to do. We, we also want to copy these files into the theme directory. So we could do that first here. I guess we could do it after. No, let's do it here. Or, no, let's do it here. CP dollar one, which will be the full path. Uh, to, to, to the file uh, force and we copy that to gtk theme deal slash theme name dot colors right I think we might need this here maybe not There. So now every time we run, uh, uh, we execute Mondo Generator, it should do this, meaning it would generate our theme. Let's see if it works. I don't think it will work, and it shouldn't work. Uh, let's. Uh, yes. 
theme, other colors here. I can see I have some slush here, or maybe that was something I did by mistake when I typed. But uh, theme, other colors is already in GTK theme. And, uh, and this is something I, I did by design here, because I don't want to generate uh, every theme every time I generate. Uh, if it is already generated, then uh, 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 it would just skip that generator here. Because so, uh, most of the time with Mondo here, you, you might end up with a, lots of generators, maybe 10, 15 generators. And uh, uh, most of the time you only want to generate new or ungenerated themes in a way. Whatever, I don't want to get too much into the details here, but what we can do is force uh, the generation here and then it will actually uh, do do the generator script here also and I think this will work and it should install the theme for us and that theme will be called other colors force doesn't exist ah of course of course use it here force there and as you can see now now it uh, actually generates these themes using mondo here uh, navigating to the theme directory and everything uh, we should also see our other colors uh, colors file here with our uh, custom cyan uh, variable uh, implemented into the I can see here also we should have changed this variable to the name of the theme. I, I, I hope it will work here. It might display the wrong name for it here now. Uh, yeah, as you can see, the, it, this is not just like the most straightforward thing to do, but It's also not the most complicated thing to do. And I guess it's a good showcase of, of how to use Mono because the nice thing here is when everything is set up and done, all you need to do is change your, your theme colors, you know, these files, and, and you don't have to worry about this location of the themes or anything. Uh, and now we should have our other colors. Uh, available for us in, in our theme here maybe yeah here we have other colors yeah I guess it didn't really matter that we named it something else there beautiful let's take some other theme as well till we're done here and that is exactly what uh, th this is how I want, want it to work when I generate themes but when I apply themes, uh, then I don't want to copy the fi files here. That is something that you do most of the time. Almost all my other Mondo generators, they just copy some file like this. But with the GTK themes, it's completely different. What, what we actually do when we apply the, 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 the GTK theme, we don't do anything. We don't need to do anything with, with these files. We actually need to modify some other files instead. Uh, and those files are, it's two files. Uh, one is located in the home directory and it's called uh, ls.gtk. Yeah, there it is, gtk rc-2.0. Uh, we can cut it out, it's not a big file. This is how my, my uh, GTK2 file looks like. And here we can see the theme name is set to Umox, which is the file that I, or a theme I just set with the LX appearance, you know. If I change theme again, and set it to Daba here, which is a stupid theme that I was working on for a while. Now we can see it have changed uh, the theme name again to Daba. So this is one thing we need to do is, is to update this file with the name of, of the theme we want to apply. But this only sets the theme for uh, uh, GTK2. You also need to change the settings in GTK3 for this uh, to be uh, perfect. And those settings are of course located somewhere else like 
config. Uh, I don't even really remember it. Yeah, gtgate three dot zero, and then it's uh, settings ini. It it looks almost the same. Here you can see it's it's almost identical. It's just it doesn't have the the double quotes like like the other file has. So what we need to do here is to create uh, yet a couple of more Mondo templates here for these files. So Mondo uh, template. What was it now? Mm. Yeah, name file. So the name GTK. Uh, file settings dot ini, and then we do one for the GTK two as well. Dot uh, GTK. Oh, there and there. And as you can see, this is just a name that it will be called here in, in the Mondo directory, just to make it easier to find the files. Uh, and this is what I call a generator. And the generator contains one of the uh, items is the template. And that's a copy of, of the file you use to create the generator here. And here uh, we want to set the, the, the theme name here to the theme name we are trying to apply. And that is stored in the variable theme. I think that's what it's called. You can look at this file. Inside the themes directory, you have this current file here, which contains all available variables. And some of the variables are, are kind of built in here. For example, theme, uh, it, it is not a a variable you set yourself it's uh, I think that is actually the only uh, magic variable that, that is created by Mondo here but you can use this theme variable in, in the uh, generators to, to get the name of, of the actual theme so we just replace uh, the theme with this here in both GTK2 and GTK3 template and with these files, then it is exactly what we want to do. We want to apply, uh, we want to just copy these files with, with the new themes. So now we can actually do here, uh, or let's do it, mongo apply, uh, what did we call it, my colors, there. And when you do apply, uh, you know what then it doesn't really generate the themes that's not what it's supposed to do but if if the the files it needs to to apply it aren't generated it will also generate it in the uh, generators here and it skipped uh, or it never n now it didn't generate or do anything with the gtk theme uh, things here but it actually created our these two here which we can see the theme name is replaced with my colors and if we open these actual files, or, or if we cut them out here, we can see it also have my colors because it have also copied the files that we uh, applied here. But it doesn't update the theme, as you can see. Um, because that's yet another uh, thing you need to install or, or create some, some kind of update script. There are different methods to do this and uh, but I have found uh, let's see gtkrc reload is, is uh, the package that, that I use and I found it in AUR uh, so gtkrc reload here you can see it's a utility to, to reload gtkrc uh, configurations but but uh, I think it only works for GTK2 themes, uh, sadly, but that's how it is. So install that. Um, if you are using Arc, easy, just grab it from AUR here. Otherwise, you can install it some other ways. I, I, I believe it's just a, a, a Perl script, actually. So, which GTK RC reload? 
Ah, whatever. I think it's a Perl script. But when that's installed, uh, then you can just execute that and it will reload uh, uh, GTK. And now we have actually updated the settings, so now we should see a different theme here if we do this. And it worked. And what that means is that, that when we apply uh, the GTK theme, we actually, uh, what we really want to do is uh, after we have copied these files, we want to execute this command. So we could either put this command uh, here, this apply script, but then we are not sure here if we put it here. We, we, we are not 100% sure that it has actually updated the other uh, generators. Uh, so a better way here for in, in this uh, scenario is actually to add it to this uh, global uh, apply script here, post apply, which, which will be, be executed after all generators are, uh, it have executed all generators apply script, then it will execute this. And this is a good place to put this GDK RC reload. You can just put it here in this script and then it will automatically get executed by Mondo when we uh, apply a theme. So if I change here now to other colors, you see, it, uh, now it updated the theme and everything. And if we want to, we could just to show you here how this really works. If we create an, a new theme file here in, in uh, or let's do it with, with the command Mondo new uh, this is cool. It will create a new theme called This is Cool. And here, let's change the background to yellow. And now, if we apply This is Cool, then it, 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 it will both it will generate uh, the theme, it will generate the, these settings files. And it will also apply the theme when it, when all of that is done. So it will take some time when you create a new theme, but you, there's no way getting around that. But still, it's it's quite uh, easy to, to work with these things when, when all, all of it is set up like this. But, I, you know, I, I create my themes uh, somewhat on myself. I often borrow the colors from someone else's rise a bit, but uh, I... I, I always fine-tune the themes uh, a bit, like finding the perfect shade of grey, you know? <laughs> um, and when, when you do that, when you change the themes, even if you just change one simple single value here, uh, with this setup I need to regenerate the theme. And, and sure, that is a bit annoying, it takes some time, just and, and sometimes you just do it just to see how did that background color really look in in GTK and, and the annoying thing is that it is often the GTK theme that, that is that is the most complicated theme of them all you know it's so many different elements that you need to see how, how the colors works in and stuff and here you can see now it updated with this is cool but uh, it feels like it used the wrong ah no that's right we Remember this, uh, in, in the GTK theme, in the template here, we, the only thing we did uh, was to change uh, the background color to cyan. And in This is Cool, uh, the theme file, we never changed cyan color, so it just uses the stock cyan here. Uh, I should have changed background color to BG, but whatever, you know, this is how it works. And that is how I uh, use or how I update my GTK. And now when all the themes are generated and everything, then, then you know it's extremely fast here now to, to switch between them. So my colors updates to that. Other colors updates to that. This is cool updates to that. Uh, but also, it doesn't update GTK3. You need to restart those applications to see, to see the changes in effect. But uh, that's just something you need to do if that's really important. But you have to ask yourself, is, is this really important that I can change a theme and see the updates immediately? In one way, I think this is kind of weird that this is so difficult and weird to do, you know, to get the 
update of this because it's yeah it's it's a bit annoying to work with this another thing you should ask yourself is do you really want to create custom gtk themes it's really difficult to find and especially create your own consistent themes and if i'm not mistaken this one uh, is actually not that good now it also looks like it have some mix here of Sublime here. Yeah, we get these weird. Uh, um, yeah, now, now it looks like we have a lot of strange new mix colors here. Whatever. But the default colors uh, have have a really strange way of of displaying. Uh, in menus here, you can see there are check marks next to each, and these gray check marks, what they mean is they are not active. And this, I, I find this extremely annoying. I would rather have no check mark at all, at all if it's not uh, checked or marked. And some themes, it, it's like impo impossible to see if if it's. Uh, it looks almost uh, the opposite. It looks like. Uh, inactive items are active and, and vice versa and I know I went into this uh, SVG file uh, SVG uh, file here uh, and manually sh reversed the checked and the unchecked uh, um, values uh, but whatever I don't feel I want to do that but it's weird stuff like that you, you kind of it's never never perfect these so if, if you want somewhat of a professional working system, it's, it's almost better to just not fiddle with this and you use one of the good full-blown themes. Probably the best ones are, are the ones that uh, uh, this different distributions provide. Uh, I cannot really vouch for that e either, I haven't really tried it, but I, as I understand, uh, for example, Manjaro spends a lot of time to create uh, good consistent theming uh, and uh, I believe they have good GTK themes and you know the, bi the big uh, uh, common GTK themes like uh, Numix and Arc and um, whatever they are called or you can go crazy like me and, and use this and, and the one that I have found is the best is this Numix uh, um, solarized gtk theme uh, because it generates these custom png images because that's another thing that can look really weird when you use uh, programs like umox and stuff you, you don't get like good uh anti ally you know icons and stuff can look weird and here you can also see this icon it's impossible to see here it's you you will probably need to spend quite some time to to fine-tune uh, just this uh, color definition template here but at the same time it's not that many uh, variables here and, and, and they are quite uh, self-explanatory what, what, what they are uh, configuring but the thing is you might set like this info foreground color that might also affect something like four or five different elements it's it will take some time to, to get this perfect uh, and as I have said many times, I don't recommend this really uh, and I will definitely not support anyone trying this out and having issues. Now I have shown you exactly how I do this from, from what I install and everything. But don't expect it to, to just look good and, or, or perfect uh, the first time you try this. But this is how I do it and it's also a good demonstration of, of how Mondo work here. But you imagine, you, you understand, right? You set all of these variables to correspond to, to the theme variables you, des, you define in, in your Mondo theme here. And you know, you don't have to stick to, to these uh, uh, variable names. You can name, name the variables anything you want and use those names in, in the themes. And it doesn't have to be, 
doesn't have to be uh, 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 colors, it can be text, it can be anything. And I think here I actually link, maybe I should rewrite this a bit, the code here now when I think about it, it's annoying, it's, it's the same syntax as, as um, x resources. So to call a variable here, cyan, this will get translated into to this here and stuff. And there are even some functions you can use in, in uh, Mondo to mix colors and stuff. I, I use it my, myself. Um, maybe we can take a quick look at my, my own uh, Mondo stuff here. Uh, so if we do this, let's remove our custom Mondo and go back to my good old uh, Mondo themes here. Let's see if it's updated. this you can see if we look at uh, yeah this pine colors for example I use some functions you can write like here I I said less that means take the active background and the active background is the accent color and the accent color is here so so I kind of make I, I like this style of writing uh, themes here and I have like background foreground foreground two I just set that to foreground and then background two I take the background but less and that means if it's dark make it less dark if it's light make it less light I actually created that function myself. Uh, mix uh, it mixes two colors so, so for my comments here th this color of the common text then I mix the background and the foreground with the <laughs> this amount uh, to get a good uh, effect whatever thank you for watching um, I don't know I just want to make this video uh, thank you, Gavin, for the for the quest question. It was a good question. I, I have gotten it several times, and I often reply to it actually, and, and uh, w with the instructions here. But most or almost everyone who who I have this discussion with, with they are just uh, they give up uh, when they see this uh, uh, new mix. Uh, new mix dependency list or, or whatever it is and then they don't even try it you know and I felt maybe this is a bit too advanced uh, uh, to show it will just create confusion but this is for you Gavin and the other <laughs> bud fans out there you know have a great day everybody bye